and there's a lot of people that I speak to as well, just in my own life, you know, you can see how Bitcoin has changed the way they think or has changed their lives. And people often credit Bitcoin to being like a, a big thing for them. But I, I guess for yourself, it's it's kind of very, very differently done that because it's kind of changed the way you're viewing an entire different industry in, in, in gaming, something quite creative and is, and is sort of letting you see it from a different way and try different new things. Um, so I think it's pretty interesting to see that actually, like how that's how that's changed you and changed the games that you guys are creating and uh, the impact you're going to make to that industry and that world. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. I noticed some parallels uh, with the innovation that you're implementing in Infinite Fleet with um, kind of like the innovation that you're doing by creating new financial instruments with Blockstream, like the mining note, which you mentioned, and uh, the se security tokens. And then also to talk about uh, Paolo, who we just recently interviewed, um, Bitfinex is doing like a security token, uh, like exchange edition where they're going to be using liquid and like lightning over liquid and some of the other things that you've been talking about. Um, are you guys like facing any sort of uh, barriers from regulators or anybody, you know, trying to stop you guys from innovating like this? Um, not really. I mean, securities are, you know, old an old concept they're nothing new um I, I think like the regulators do want you to do regulated offerings they don't want you to do an ico right so if you go to them and you say you know we're doing a security token for a game publisher you know they look at it we have to educate them on some things like you know what is liquid what is the bitcoin sidechain and how does that technology work but after they get past that hurdle it's you know, it's not a big deal. So for the Infinite Fleet's um, security token, it's called EXO. There's two, one for the EU and one for the US. The EU token, we've done that through Luxembourg with our partner Stoker. So they are, you know, fintech wizards and they helped us navigate that regulatory landscape and create the prospectus. But we've been able to have uh, retail investors uh, in Europe invest in Infinite Fleet. And just recently we announced, I think a week ago, that Baffin has uh, allowed has given us the green light to let German retail investors invest too. So I, I don't think that regulators are against security tokens. They're, they're very much for it. Um, and I think if you go the regulated route, you're probably going to have a lot less risk for your project because if you did an ICO or IEO or something along those lines, there's always that risk factor that the regulators will come after you later. Even if you say, well, we're selling a utility token, like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> if you're creating a company to kind of increase the value of that utility token and you're promising things like exchange listings, then it's probably a security. Yeah, we've seen how well that's uh, going so far with Ripple, for example, um, with the sort of the pain coming down the line. Um, it's pretty cool, actually, that because I would have imagined that for some reason, I would imagine that regulators would be kind of, you know, they'd see the word Bitcoin or something and kind of panic and like uh, hit the red button or whatever. But um, it seems like that's not the case. Um, I guess like a question that's a bit more general, but, um, cause obviously you're, you're, you're clearly excited about the game, which makes sense. As you said, it's your like child for most of this, of these last five years. And so that makes a lot of sense. And you're obviously doing a lot of new things too. I guess what in the, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be anything that's, that's block stream related, but obviously, you know, great if it is, but what, 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 what in the world of Bitcoin, I guess is, um, is like the most kind of exciting to you right now, like uh, out of projects that maybe you're working on or not working on, but like what kind of stands out to you as something that's like, hey, I want people out there listening um, to, to know like this is going on because it kind of makes me feel like a child kind of thing, you know, excites me. Like, what would you say that that would be? I, I would still say it's lightning on top of liquid. I think the potential there is really limitless. Um, I think Lightning on Liquid will enable things like machine-to-machine uh, -machine payments in a real decentralized fashion, right? You know, there's there are altcoin projects out there that try to say that they're 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 solving that use case, but I think Lightning is actually Lightning on Bitcoin and Liquid assets is probably the real application of that technology in that space, where you know you can have different microservices talking to other microservices and paying each other. Um, I think there's the potential for real decentralized chat and communications uh, leveraging the Lightning Network. And I think uh, Sphinx Chat is a very interesting thing in my book. You guys should probably talk to them, but they're building a chat app uh, that's based on Lightning. So, you know, uh, even the, the apps that we have today, you know, like uh, Signal and everything like that, they're, they're okay, but I still think there's a, 
a strong central point of failure. Whereas if you can build something on lightning for communications, then you remove those single points of failure and you actually get real robust private decentralized chat. I guess like something for me as well that um, has personally uh, made me feel better. I, I was always quite interested in lightning, but I did always have that concern that like, Hey, you know, could some altcoin come along or whatever and get like a better market share and do this or that and, and be better for quicker payments. And cause I, I guess when I first got involved in the whole crypto world and uh, years ago, I was like, Hey, this is a faster crypto than Bitcoin. You know, I had that kind of view. Um, but I guess something that's really helped for me is just seeing El Salvador actually, like as much as it's uh, all over the place right now in the news and, there's little bugs with the Chivo app and things like that. But on the side of that, it's like we've seen that, hey, no matter what anyone says in any no coin, old coin, whatever situation, uh, hey, it, it's working pretty well now, now that things are off the off the, off the line. People are turning it into dollars at, at, at ATMs or vice versa, and people are buying things at McDonald's and Starbucks and whatever in El Salvador. So it's quite reassuring to see that happen. Um I don't know like what what because obviously when when El Salvador was broken it was cool and exciting and then you realize it's kind of being forced on the people and it feels a bit off and I don't know I didn't know what your opinions were on like that whole El Salvador situation maybe not just I'm not trying to go into a political answer or anything but I didn't know what your opinions were on like how things have gone there and like how it makes you feel for the future of lightning and, and liquid and bitcoin in general I suppose yeah I think um their rollout of Chivo may have been a bit rushed they could have probably done with some more time but I think the more important thing is to look at the, the entire macro level of it, which is a nation state is adopting Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of you know, complexities in that in and of itself. You know, like uh, I think at the launch, it was like mandated, like you must accept Bitcoin. And later on, it was changed. Like, you know, it's optional. Um, but the, the important thing is it, it is legal tender and it sets that precedent and it enables more nation states to roll that out. But Ultimately, down the road, I don't think we need to concern ourselves as Bitcoiners with legal tender because the best money will always win. The freest money will always win. So, you know, legal tender is a nice thing right now. Um, it's cool. But at the end of the day, you know, in 50, 100 years, you don't need to have Bitcoin as legal tender. People will just accept Bitcoin because there's no other alternative. Like, why would you take something else? Just like today, if I try to pay you in seashells, like, would you? Would you accept that? I don't think so. Right? So it's just a no brainer. But you know, what El Salvador is doing is important. They're kind of kicking off that whole nation state adoption of Bitcoin, just like Michael Saylor kicked off you know, corporate treasury adoption of Bitcoin. And all of these things are good for Bitcoin. And of course, there are hurdles with all of these things too. Like even uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, they got, uh, uh, they got a lot of FUD when Bitcoin dropped. You know, people were saying, oh, He's failing or whatever, but you know, I think they're looking at things on too short of a time horizon. They just have to, you know, learn to wait and be more patient and see. But it's all going in the right direction. I think it's all great for Bitcoin. Yeah, it's a good point you raise actually about legal tender because I guess my initial thoughts were always like, hey, it's annoying that doing taxes is a pain up the backside when you like getting paid in, in Bitcoin. And I, I, I opt to get paid in USDT instead and then turn it into Bitcoin when I get it. Cause for tax purposes, it's so much easier to just be like, boom, boom, you know, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Um, so I guess like th there's that in my brain and also things like you can't pay your taxes in Bitcoin or, uh, you know, pay uh, your car, uh, road tax or insurance, or whatever. But then I guess, um, as you say, like the, 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 the best money, the freest money will, will win anyway. Um, it kind of makes me think of like, uh, it's safe Dean's book where he talks about, um, like how it kind of, you get that v v feeling that the government used to ask you like, Oh, please accept, you know, uh, pounds or dollars, uh, and, and give us your gold. And then now it's kind of the other way around, right. It's kind of like, you know, you're told, yeah, you're accepting it because you have to, or you're going to get chucked in prison or whatever. Um, so I guess like, uh, as you say, it kind of feels like you don't need the legal tender. You don't actually need the government to really say anything. If everyone in the UK, for example, just talking from home has Bitcoin and everyone in the UK wants to use Bitcoin, you're not going to turn them away, are you? Basically, so it becomes a kind of like mass overwhelming situation, like a bottom up rather than top down, like El Salvador. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah. legal tender in itself is kind of a fiat concept, right? Like when we're uh, when we're transacting in gold, no one had to make gold legal tender, right? We just know this thing is valuable. Uh, you know, God bless Peter Schiff, but <laughs> you know, 
in its heyday, gold was not made legal tender. It's just people use gold because you know it's gold. Yeah, basically, it's like an understanding of hey, this this is it's hard to make more. It's it looks super nice, <laughs> and also it's just uh, it, it derives its value from its uh, robustness as well. I guess right, like it's harder to to break down than other materials uh, and doesn't erode as quickly. Like if you see a gold coin on the road or a copper penny on the road, the copper penny is usually defaced as hell by by two days yeah. later. Um, no, it's just uh, yeah, it's a good point. I, I guess I hadn't thought about the the, the lack of need uh, immediately for the government to say, "Hey, we don't, we don't, you know, to, this is legal tender. We don't really need that anyway." Quite frankly, um, although it is encouraging with El Salvador. Uh, did you have any further questions, Ricardo? Because I'm aware we're running towards. I have an hour. one last two part question because I know we're getting to the end. Um, do you have a magical crypto update? And what's the next hat that you're going to make? Well, we stopped doing magical crypto. I think we all got really busy. Um, so there will be no more episodes unless we do like a special reunion episode <laughs> or something like that. Um, but yeah, like the, um, there's one more short we did, an animated short, but we never finished recording the voice over for it. So that's still sitting in the wings waiting to be released. I guess that's the only magical crypto update I have. Um, uh, next hat. Um, let's see, I did have fun staying poor. Uh, I was thinking of doing shadowy super coder next. I'm still thinking about what to do for it though, but I'll definitely send you guys that when, when I have it. Well, yeah, I guess we're, we've run to the, uh, to the end, sadly. Um, there's more things I probably would have liked to ask, but maybe in the future someday, uh, we can, we can have you back on, um, maybe when the, the game fully launches, actually, that'd be kind of cool. Um, you can even run us through it, but, but appreciate you coming on and, uh, giving us your time. It's been awesome to, to chat to you, uh, an honor. And uh, yeah, just thank you very much. Um, and thank you also to all those who've listened to the three of us talk uh, today about Bitcoin and games and exciting different things. It's much appreciated. Um, so yeah, thanks once again. And uh, to everyone out there, have a lovely day, evening, morning, week, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thanks, Ricardo. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you.